Hello and welcome to a new episode of Lost Gotham TV. In this episode, in the, the series reviewing Richard Lehman books, we're going to be taking a look at the Midnight Tour. So, uh, this is the third book in the Beast House Chronicles, if you haven't seen the earlier episodes. Uh, this is the, the biggest, and in my opinion, the best of the Beast House Chronicles. I have two copies of this book. And uh, not to get too off topic here, but um, I've collected Richard Lehman for, for many years. And it's only just now here recently with the 18th anniversary of his passing that I decided to get really serious and read anything and everything I could get my hands on. So there's very few of his books that I, we have multiple copies of. The, this is one of them. Because, you know, we, we were active readers when this came out and we were we were buying stuff as and when it came out. And so we probably I have two copies of this book. And after I emigrated from England, uh, we moved from place to place. A lot of my stuff stayed in boxes. And unfortunately, some of my Richard Lehman books or for, well, all of my Richard Lehman books stayed in storage for a while. And at some point there was some flooding. Can you see where this is headed? Well, I have two copies of the Midnight Tour in hardback right here. And this is just a, a regular hardback edition, no problem. This special signed edition that I have, somehow, someway, it was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and so it got water damaged. You know, it, it still reads fine. Um, it wasn't a personalized edition. Uh, it, it is it is just kind of a signed edition, not a, a personalized one. But uh, and and it's not like I would ever plan on selling my books, so I don't care about the um, the the damage to it. You know, it is still viable as a book to me, and I still love it. Um, I guess maybe I'm just bringing this up as a word of warning to people to just be very careful and protect your books. Make sure you know where they're stored. Maybe store things in plastic containers instead of cardboard. Um, and yeah, so be, be careful with your books. Um, for, for me, they are babies and they should be protected. And I left my babies out in a box in the elements and they got wet. That's not good. Anyway, back to the book. So, Midnight Tour. Um, this is, hands down, my favorite of the Beast House Chronicles book. It's the, the third of four. Um, but I, I'm not sure really like the fourth one counts fully. It's kind of weird. I'll, I'll talk about that in the next video. But uh, so so this one updates things a little bit. Uh, technology has moved on a little bit. I talked about technology in the uh, some of the earlier videos because the the first ones were uh, set in the seventies. The this one, let me think. This one was released in probably the late 90s and it actually skips backwards and forwards in time so okay so this was published in 98 okay so 1998 uh this came out uh, a year the the year before uh my wife and i met richard layman and so this jumps backwards and forwards in time uh between 1980 and 1997 OK, so there's actually two parallel storylines going on in this book. And again, that's part of um, what I like about this book. You know, it's a bigger book. It's the best book. Uh, if you've read the previous two, there there are some returning characters. Uh, again, I'll, I'll try not to go into too much detail, spoiler territory. But there are some re returning characters, but there's also new characters there's a lot of new characters, and I excuse me, and I really like some of these new characters. 
They're, they're are my favorites of characters that have been in this series, but they also stand out for me as characters just even in his books uh, as a whole. So uh, I highly recommend Midnight Tour. It, it, um, it continues the story. In some ways, it concludes the story. But if you've read any of the books, you know that in this series, at least, that's not always necessarily the case. What, what you, and that, that's some of what I like about Richard Lehman's writing, you know, sort of what happens isn't always necessarily what you think happens. There's, there's always something a little bit more. I wouldn't consider them twists. They're not necessarily gimmicks. OK, some people think about like the movies of M. Night Shyamalan, uh, you know, Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Split, Glass, uh, The Lady in the Water. Again, I, I like his movies and I like his plot twists. But a lot of people criticize him for, you know, having that as a gimmick. For me, in Richard Lehman books, it's not a gimmick. You know, sometimes there is that kind of twist at the end where it seems like it's going one way and then all of a sudden it zags to the right and uh, you, you, you're you left kind of feeling like, what the hell just happened? Um, there, there's a little bit of, I, I, don't, I don't know, there's a little bit of some of that in some of these books, but um, not as much as other books we'll, we'll discuss in the future. So, again, just to recap, I, I highly recommend this book. It, uh, it updates things really nicely, bringing it uh, up into the 90s. We're cell phones and things still aren't prevalent okay for for younger readers you know people had cell phones in the 90s but they were not as prevalent or omnipresent as they are now it seems like almost everyone has a cell phone today back then they didn't so again that factors into the story and some younger readers might be kind of frustrated by the story in terms of you know oh you know why didn't they just use their cell phone why didn't they do this why didn't they do that well they didn't have them many people did not have a cell phone at this point so it wasn't as simple as just calling someone up and checking on them or this or that anyway again uh midnight tour highly recommend it if you only read one of the beast house chronicles books go ahead and read this um you're obviously going to be missing some of the story from the other books, but it's such a great story on its own. Uh, I've, I find that it's so much better than the earlier uh, The Cellar and Beast House that if you started reading those, you might kind of get discouraged and you might not, in, you might not have the stamina to make it to, to this book. But if you do... If you read the earlier books, it really, I mean, I, I read them here recently back to back. And so it was amazing for me, you know, things that I had maybe forgotten or I wasn't sure about when I read them individually with reading other books in between. Reading them back to back really uh, brought home for me the, 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 the planning and the plotting on Mr. Layman's part in terms of a, a through story and a continuation, you know. The, these were not just slapped together kind of things. There was some careful planning and going back. And e even if he didn't plan on writing another book, he went back afterwards and looked at what he had done and found great, believable, realistic ways of moving the story forward. You know, it wasn't just slapped together. It wasn't a money grab. These were good, legitimate books. Anyway, I've said enough. I will let you go, but I will see you next time.